Hello and welcome to the Alliance for Democracies, the Populist Dialogues, our weekly uh, program discussing today's issues from a progressive populist perspective. Our topic today will be health care, and we're going to talk with uh, Lee Mercer, who's the president of Healthcare for All Oregon. Lee was on the executive team of Main Street Alliance of Oregon. Uh, he's done uh, advocacy work for 11 years for the Oregon Center for Public Policy, and before that, co chaired the California Hunger Action Coalition. Mm -hmm. uh, before entering the nonprofit and advocacy world, he uh, had a small business. Uh, for 20 years. So welcome to the show, Lee. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you're here. Um, so we have uh, had a um, interesting uh, several months on the healthcare uh, um, field you know, with uh, the Republicans' attempt to uh, modify Obamacare mm -hmm. and, uh, and with, with Trump uh, conceding that uh, Healthcare is kind of complicated. <laughs> Good deduction. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how a, a bright man like him, who can make so many dis, who's a decision maker, didn't realize that healthcare was a complicated mm -hmm. issue. All right. So, uh, talk a little bit about the problems from a populist or from a pro progressive perspective of Obamacare. What were the problems that that we saw, not the Republicans saw, but we saw? Well, again, and there, as you know, there's over 25 states that have been working on moving toward a um, Medicare for all uh, single payer type model or a model that would cover everyone in the population uh, on the state level, as well as for over 100 years, we've been trying to get their uh, nation, uh, national health program from Teddy Roosevelt to FDR to Truman to uh, Hillary Clinton, to Obama, and then dropping the ball on uh, single payer during the rollout of Obamacare. But Obamacare just doesn't get us to universal health care, essentially. And it, it continues to subsidize the health care industry, and the cost of health care continues to rise at unsustainable rates mm -hmm. with uh, co-pays, deductibles, and um, and in a way, the Republicans are right. We need to have a more efficient and affordable system, and we feel like that would be a national health care program, or at the state level, a Medicare for All program negotiated with the federal government. Mm -hmm. There is where we also agree with the Republicans, is given the uh, ability by the federal government to innovate at the state level, we could build a more efficient system. Yeah, so, so I, I was interested, you, you said Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, actually. Uh, uh, that was that was the first time in the U.S. it was discussed the idea of a, a national health program. Okay, so well over a hundred. Yeah, well yeah. over a hundred yeah. years ago, a, a, and uh, Truman, uh, when he ran, mm -hmm. had health care, universal health care, as a as a major uh, campaign issue. It was, and it was explicitly a, a campaign issue, and that was where the battle lines were drawn when the American Medical Association paid some advertising ep experts to design one of the most expensive advertising, uh, political advertising campaigns in history up to that point to convince the American people that a national health care program would be socialism. And that meme has been used since 1949 on mm -hmm. as the argument against doing uh, Medicare for all. And, um, but that was that was when when it all started. Uh, yeah, you know. e, e, and e, that is inspired the fact that about the same time was when the European nations, coming out of the Second World yeah. War, were setting resetting up their healthcare programs, and doing universal, uh, single payer type right. systems. Right. Right. You know. So uh, it, it is unfortunate the United States can be so isolated from the rest of the world sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Well, it came out of World War II because during World War II there were limits on increasing salary. So at that time, the only way to increase salary was to give other benefits. And so the industries were giving health insurance during World War II in lieu of salary. And that uh, we went down the wrong path by turning it into an employer-based system at that point. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and this is really where the origins of the Kaiser healthcare system yeah, come from. Yeah, as well. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, right. And uh, in Seattle, King County, they had uh, group health mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. right, for a long time. I don't know if that even still exists or not. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, um, so 
you said there are some places where we agree with Republicans. Where do we not agree with them? Well, uh, clearly at this point, their whole plan is to downsize the federal government and government's role in health care and make it less expensive to block grant Medicaid, to voucherize Medicare, and to take the protections built into the Affordable Care Act out. Um, basically, we'd be going back at least 10, if not 20 years, in terms of we'd m tens of millions of people would be thrown off of health care. And, and their vision is, again, uh, the private, uh, the, the market's going to somehow magically solve the cost of health care. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. So tens of millions, I think 26 mm -hmm. million mm -hmm. was the mm -hmm. specific yeah. figure, I yeah. think, that came out of the Congress yeah. Budget Office. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that would be on top of all of those who are not currently covered. Yeah, right. right. So right. Obamacare, um, you know, part of that original discussion was about having universal health care. Right. Uh, he advocated for a public option and then dropped it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so there were millions of people still, even right. under Obamacare. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure the exact number on the now is the time film we're playing. At that time, I think it was 14, it was 28 million. So you had the 20, we'll be back up to 50 million ish that mm -hmm. aren't covered. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, yeah. And, and, and of course, the Republican Trump Care, Ryan Care, was to kick people off of the health uh, insurance programs while giving tax breaks to the wealthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's, let, let, let's dive a little bit more into proposals that are on the table for creating a universal health care system nationwide. Okay, good. So there is a movement that's been building momentum. Um, really, I mean, people were um, have been pushing for this for decades, but after the passage of uh, Obamacare in 2009, um, the state-based systems dealt with two things. One is Congress, clearly in the, in the last decade or so, Congress has not been uh, willing to do anything uh, around health care other than pass Obamacare. They weren't going to move toward a, any kind of a national program. So states were begin t beginning to work on state-based single-payer health care based on um, a waiver in the Affordable Care Act, the Section 1332 waiver, that allows a state to innovate beyond the standards set by Ob Obamacare to a program that covers more people more effectively. So that's the assumption of most states, 20 plus states that are working on building a, a state-based system, is that they would pass it legislatively or by ballot measure, and then after passing it under the Affordable Care Act, under this waiver, they negotiate with the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services and uh, negotiate a waiver whereby they can take the incoming federal dollars, mix it into a single uh, funding source with other sources and basically have a single payer system. Mm -hmm. at, at the state level? At the state okay. level. And, and, and mm -hmm. did any states actually take that? Uh, the uh, Vermont began to. They passed it legislatively um, in 2011 and then they were moving up to the point of deciding how, how much extra tax on top of federal dollars they'd need to, to use to make the system and then the Governor Shumlin, Shumlin in in Vermont decided mm, this is going to cost too much and backed off. So that's the closest we've gotten at the state level. Under the Affordable Care Act, negotiations under that waiver uh, section couldn't start till 2017 anyway. So that any state that had passed legislation in the last few years would have had to wait till 2017 to sit down and negotiate with the federal government. Now is the time that if California, which is got a, a single-payer bill in their legislature this session with a two-thirds majority uh, Democratic majority in both houses and a lot of energy in the state toward passing it. If they pass it, they would now be able to negotiate with the federal government um, to create a system. And that mm -hmm. being the sixth largest economy in the world would be a game changer in the United okay. States. So, so I'm sorry, you said there is legislation. There in is California legislation to do that, that has now. just been entered. In, and it was in just California. introduced. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And California has introduced and actually passed this legislation before. That's true. It's actually passed twice um, through both houses and, and went to the governor's desk. In this case, Governor Schwarzenegger vetoed it twice. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So third time's the charm? Yeah. yeah. We would All hope right. so. Good. Yes. Right. Um, 
going, going back to the federal, mm -hmm. uh, there has been uh, federal legislation mm -hmm. to do this. Can mm -hmm. you talk about that? Yeah, so uh, Representative Conyers has had the H.R. 676, which is currently called the Expanded and Improved Medicare for All Act, since 2003 in the Congress, and has had a, had a growing list of supporters, but never was this bill considered like it was really moving. Um, because the political lift of getting that passed in Congress versus the lobbying power and the money flowing in from the insurance industry, pharmaceutical industry, and, and so forth has always been viewed as a bit of a quixotic dream. But all of a sudden, with the crisis in health care at this moment in the country where the Re Republicans are literally threatening to tear apart the um, health care system, um, the, I was in New York City with over 500 single-payer advocates five days before the inauguration of Donald Trump, and we were at our annual convention. This was the biggest turnout of single-payer payer people in history, and, and not only were people uh, energized, but they were really saying, now is the time to really get moving. Because one, we have to defend Medicaid, defend Medicare, defend the Affordable Care Act in terms of not going backwards, mm -hmm. but as a movement, we need to pivot and say, Yes, we're going to defend these, but why not go all the way to a national health program? Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, um, as you remember here in Portland, our senators, Merkley and Wyden, as well as some of the representatives gathered at a, at a rally to defend health care, and there were 2,000 people in that wow. auditorium. And when uh, Representative Blumenauer said, well, maybe we should look at uh, single payer again, this was the biggest cheer in the auditorium of 2,000 yes, people. Yes, I recall that. Mm -hmm. And five days later, he, for the first time, the first um, representative out of Oregon to sign on to H.R. 676, he signed on to 676, and we've been showing a movie called Now's the Time, uh, talking about single payer here uh, in America, the movement. And um, at all of those screenings, we've been handing a uh, paper out, asking people to call their Congress people. In the last month, uh, Representative Bonamici, Suzanne Bonamici has signed on, and now Representative DeFazio has signed on. Mm -hmm. So in a month, we have three Congress people um, supporting this bill, and this is what's going on around the country. Is people are realizing, you're seeing it in the New York Times, you're seeing it in the Washington Post, uh, all of a sudden op-eds saying, why not? Mm -hmm. If we're going to be reorienting our health care system, why not go all the way? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so from crisis might come... Yeah. Uh, come the come the fruit. Yeah. I think that kind of mixing mm -hmm. metaphors. Yeah. There, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, the message to our audience is that uh, if you are particularly if you're in Representative Schrader's district, mm -hmm. uh, please call him and ask him to support and sign on as a co-sponsor of HR six seven six. Absolutely. And what was it? What was it called? The expanded. The expanded Im and improved Medicare for All Act. All right. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. So this is good news. This is good news. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and, and uh, of, of course, this was, you know, with the defeat, this was the first uh, uh, defeat of legislation that Trump has suffered. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the Republicans are shown to be totally in disarray, to have no yeah. plans. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and any plans that they had would be totally uh, detrimental to, uh, to the general population. Yeah, I, I think it would behoove us, though, not to be too confident because I think they will be coming back, and I, need, I think we need to be prepared. Uh, yes, uh, yes, oh, right. And, and it, it seems like one of the best ways to be prepared is to have your own plan. Yeah. To, to bring yeah. it forward. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so this is this is all good news. So let's uh, focus now on on Oregon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, what has happened in Oregon? There's an interesting evolution that's happened. Going way back, Oregon is already an innovator in health care. Our uh, previous governor, John Kitzhaber, who was an ER doctor himself, was a big advocate on health care reform way, going way back to the 90s. And we have a history in Oregon of negotiating with the federal government for waivers to improve our health care system, including to streamline and make more effective uh, our Oregon health plan or our version of Medicaid. And then um, over the years to actually, in the last few years, to set up the coordinated care organizations that manage a million people that are on the Oregon Health Plan in Oregon to make um, their, 
their health services be integrated between behavioral and dental and medical and so forth, but also to um, put a damper on the cost curve. And so what our promise to the federal government has been to uh, slow down the increase of the cost of health care for that population in trade for monies and waivers to be able to streamline these coordinated care organizations. So we have a long history of negotiating with the federal government and if we move forward on that single payer plan um, that history will help us. But in terms of moving forward on single payer, um, in 2002 a group called Health Care for All Oregon, which then was a little regional group, uh, went to the voters with a ballot measure, Measure 23, to try to achieve single-payer health care. In retrospect, most advocates realized it was a poorly written uh, measure that not only was it uh, rejected by conservative voters, uh, the, all Oregon unions, except the Oregon Nurses Association, not only were not neutral, they were against the bill. Mm -hmm. So it, wa it wasn't going to pass. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I remember yeah. actually sitting down and reading that. Yeah. It yeah. Was Uncomprehensible. Yeah, it was. It, it was. It, it was. Yeah. It was. It was good that there was a first attempt, but it mm -hmm. was. It wasn't a good first attempt. So, fast forward to the negotiations, or moving up to the Ob Obamacare negotiations at the federal level. One of the groups in Oregon that's really active on health care is uh, the local, the Oregon groups of the Physicians for a National Health Program, who branded themselves at one point the mad as hell doctors oh, yes. and they took off on a national tour as the mad as hell doctors with musicians and comedy and fun and presentations and they went to a number of cities across the country to Washington DC bringing the message that we really need a single payer health plan. Um, meantime in the Obamacare negotiations the advocates for single payer were literally shut out of the hearings and Obama, Obama and um, Bacchus uh, basically said um, that not only was single payer not on the table, but even a public option ended up on the table. So we got what we got in Obamacare, and advocates in Oregon, after licking their wounds, began to build a larger coalition from the regional group out of Eugene. They worked with Mid Valley healthcare advocates, with Jobs with Justice in um, Portland. With, with the Physicians for a National Health Program and the Mad as Hell Doctors and began building a coalition statewide that would prepare to move single payer forward. That has moved up to the present where we have 120 organizations including 25 unions or labor-based groups, business groups, faith groups, community groups, all pushing for our goals um, as well as uh, 20,000 people in our database that have already signed on in support and, and a growing list. Um, so we began running single-payer bills in 2011 in the legislature and we ran a single-payer bill and it was increasingly well articulated, well written in 2011, 2013, 2015 and now in this session in 2017. But mainly as an educational, um, a way to educate the legislature and the public on the, the, the need for this kind of a system because essentially the tax cost of such a program, in our, in our state we have a super majority for a tax mm -hmm. vote and the legislature will never pass it. So our, our real intention is to go to, in, the, in 2020 at the presidential election, to go to ballot measure. In the national movement, a number of the states looking at ballot measures are all now aiming at 2020, the next presidential mm. election. So the idea is, is to have enough states pushing ballot measures that the opposition will have to spend a lot more money to um, defeat it in 2020. Right, yeah. Be because there, wa there was a ballot measure in the last election in Colorado. That's correct. Right. Yeah, in Colorado, um, they did a lot of the work that was needed and they designed a semi-single-payer program that would have covered people from birth to 65, then Medicare would cut in. Mm. But they didn't do a lot of the homework that we believe you need to do in terms of educating voters uh, and when the tens of millions of dollars flowed in from the insurance companies and other interests, uh, they were defeated fairly handily in, in Colorado in November of 2016. Mm -hmm. So that's our big job in Oregon is to continue to educate. Part of that um, is that in 2013 we passed a bill uh, whereby the Oregon Health Authority would create a study on four ways to finance universal health care in Oregon. 
it would be either an essential health plan uh, program, a, a public uh, public option, single payer, or continuing as the Affordable Care Act. And that passed in 2013, but wasn't funded. So we went back to the legislature in 2015, and and they f they funded this. And then last year in 2016, the Oregon Health Authority put out to bid a study. Uh, to national groups and and the Rand Corporation National Think Tank uh, won the uh, bid and they've done a study and and this year in the legislature actually in April of this um, April 20th of this month um, that'll go before the Senate um, Health Care Committee and the Rand Corporation will report on that study and will be uh, highlighting our single b payer bill for this year. So, so um, they've they've issued their report already. They have issued okay. the report, and it's available publicly. And we're not fully happy with it, but but the gist of what it says is, for the same amount of paying money we're paying now for health care in Oregon, we can cover everybody and more effectively. Uh, okay, right. And, and and when we cover everybody. Mm -hmm. You, what we haven't really touched on is mm -hmm. the role that insurance companies will play. Yeah, well, in, in our model, uh, some groups and some countries that do a single-payer model, uh, they'll have options where the insurance uh, you can buy additional insurance for uh, uh, alternative services. We're actually trying to go more with the Canadian model where you do end up with a system where everybody is served the same. There isn't a class system to mm -hmm. the health, health program. There's still a possibility ability for supplemental insurance. Uh, in, in Canada, actually, you actually need supplemental insurance for drugs and other, other benefits. Um, and we, we our, our model would cover dental and vision, but if that gets negotiated back out, you might end up with supplemental on some services. Okay. Yeah, it's, it seems like uh, drugs would be crucial to have in there. Yeah, and more than being covered by insurance, they need to be uh, the the price of drugs, the ability to negotiate the price of drugs needs to be in um, in the in in the model. Yeah, can we do that at the state level, or does that have to happen? At the yeah, we level? actually have in Oregon this year some legislation that's being debated very passionately uh, on uh, trying to control drug costs and right now pharma big pharma is actually buying full page ads in the papers uh trying to defeat the, defeat this, this legislation okay. it's quite a uh okay. so yeah. it is it's possible to do certain kind of, uh controls on drug prices uh, do, do you have a um a bill number uh i have a number of bill numbers um <laughs> on the drug control prices. Mm -hmm. Our single payer bill is actually uh, an LC still. We don't have a drug. Oh, number. okay, yeah. all right, yeah. Um, I, I, I'm thinking of the one drug control bill. It's 2387, 23 HB 2387, which okay. is um, Representative Rob Nosis. Yeah, yes, that's yeah. the one yeah. I was thinking of, which, yeah. which has something to do with if, if the price that the drug company is charging is higher in Oregon than it is nationally, then the there's some rebating going yeah. on. And yeah, there's like several like levels, and there's some trans interesting transparency clauses in it where they would actually have to justify the price increases. So right. there's a lot of really interesting stuff that right. is making the pharmaceutical industry extremely unhappy. We want them to be unhappy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah well, it, it's really important yeah. that we get control over the drug yeah. pricing, if yeah. particularly if we have a public system, because that is such a big uh, part yeah. Of of uh, and, and talk about this new uh, documentary, Big Pharma. Okay, yeah, a new film that a actually hasn't even been released yet, but oh. you've seen you, yep. uh, you've seen the link, and yep. it will be out in April. It'll be um, premiering in New York City, April twenty seventh. I don't have the venue, but it's by um, Richard Master, who is a CEO of a corporation in Pennsylvania that did the film last year, Fix It Healthcare at the Tipping Point, that itself makes the argument uh, the the economic and the business argument for a single-payer health care system. His second film is called Big Pharma, Market Failure, and it, and it really is the most effective documentary I've ever seen on the pharmaceutical industry and why the out-of-control price gouging that's going on, especially on specialty drugs, is something that we need to deal with as a country on behalf of business, on behalf of our economy, and on behalf of the American people, because it's just out of control, mm -hmm. um, and his 
the film is it's well done and it and it documents how Congress is really colluding in this. There are 1,100 lobbyists for farm uh, for big pharma. That's two lobbyists for everybody in Congress, and uh -huh. they spend just immense amount of amounts of money to protect their ability to price gouge. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, Healthcare for All Oregon mm -hmm. is sponsoring a rally. Um, yes, on April 20th, we'll be doing our legislative day and um, the Senate hearing at 1 p.m., but there'll be a rally at noon on the West Capitol steps in, in um, Salem, and we'll be um, doing legislative visits as well as um, uh, the rally mm -hmm. and the... Uh, and talking to all our legislators. All right, good. All right, good. Well, I um, want to thank you very much for being here, Lee. Okay, well, yeah, half an hour goes by quickly. It does. Thank and you. There's David. so much more to say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. good. Thank you. Okay. Right. Yeah. So you've been watching Alliance for Democracies, the Populist Dialogues. We have been talking with Lee Mercer, who's the president of Healthcare for All Oregon, uh, which advocates for improved Medicare for All, uh, affordable universal health care system for the nation and for Oregon. Uh, nationally, we want to ask you to ask your U.S. representative to co-sponsor H.R. 676, which is the Expanded and Improved Medicare for All Act uh, in Oregon. Uh, we ask you to support the efforts of Healthcare for All Oregon, and you can go to their website at hcao.org. Um, if you can, please join the Alliance for Democracy and Healthcare for All Oregon for a lobby day in Salem that, that Lee just talked about. Uh, that is on Thursday, April 20th. Again, contact Healthcare for All Oregon uh, for the details. Uh, and then join the Alliance for Democracy for a screening of Big Pharma market failure on Friday, June 9th at 7 p.m. at the First Unitarian Church, Southwest 12th and salmon here in Portland. Big Pharma market failure digs deep into out of control drug prices uh, and looks to find solutions. So I hope you've enjoyed the program. I hope that we'll see you again next week. Bye.